The Nevada SPCA relies on volunteers to walk and socialize dogs who can spend years locked in kennels at the no-kill animal shelter. But some who've reached out to 13 Investigate say secrets at the shelter are putting people and animals at risk. And Chief Investigator Darcy Spears continues her coverage and also be warned right now that some of these images in the story may be disturbing. And uh, I was going to give it a treat, and I reached down to give it a treat, and it went after me. The blood was all over the place, and we couldn't stop the bleeding. Harold Street is a current volunteer for the Nevada Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. He's been walking dogs there once a week for three years. In late September, he was attacked by this dog he was walking. I had 10 stitches here. Uh, two stitches there. My thumb, you can see, is just healing now. It's growing out. The thumb was half cut off. I can tell you her injuries are horrendous. Our first story detailed the injuries volunteer Joanne Phillips endured by another NSPCA dog. Just like the dog that attacked her in the spring, the one that attacked Harold in the fall had a history of biting. In both cases, the NSPCA knew about it but didn't tell them. One of the board members told Animal Control that they had gotten the dog in May and that since then it had attempted to bite multiple people when being walked or restrained. Yeah, I found it out after the fact. After yeah. the fact. Yeah. In June, shelter notes provided to the county show the dog was being put up for adoption with no notation of a bite history. Jim Anderson is chief of county animal control. What does that say about how they're evaluating and keeping these dogs? Uh, certainly best practices are to ensure that if you don't have a, an animal that is aggressive that is being uh, adopted out. They even said that uh, the dog was put on a quarantine on July 25th for biting a customer while he was trying to grab the leash. All of this happened uh, yeah, long before you got yeah, attacked. Yeah, it was never brought to my attention. Animal control took the dog and it was euthanized. Yeah, they should have said something. The dog never should have been out. NSPCA President Kathy Jung no-showed for our scheduled interview. Since then, we spoke off camera, and she says there was a separate card on Haku's kennel noting he was treat aggressive, but we've seen no proof of that, and it's not documented in animal controls records from the bite investigation. This is the kennel card from county records. There's no notation about the dog being treat aggressive. As for whether kennel conditions have improved overall, Jim Anderson says since our investigation investigation began, change is afoot, and one of his officers says the dogs are benefiting. A lot of clean bedding, newer products were in there, all clean water, food. Um, he noted the dramatic improvement from his last inspection, while still noting some deficiencies that need to be corrected. So there is some good news, but Jung didn't even show up to talk about the positives. For Harold, Jung skipping out on our interview raises more questions, like why the dilapidated shelter hasn't been replaced with a long-promised new building. They told us they've got all the money they need to build it. Well, <laughs> they tell a different story to us, you know. With his bite wound still healing, he wants to continue helping the animals, but believes he'll be blackballed for speaking out. You think that just because you yeah. share legitimate concerns, they're going to tell you thanks but no thanks. Don't come around. Yeah. What does that say? That says we're hiding a lot and we don't know, we don't want the public to know what we're hiding. There's something wrong. My investigation continues as we try to track where the money is going, why the new shelter has not been built, and what's lurking in the NSPCA president's past. Join me for that tonight at 11. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.